Greetings, I am Lines, and I use she, her. And I am Scandal, and I use they, them. And let's play a game together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, welcome back to this game that we are thoroughly enjoying. Hulk. And despite any level of, like, presented possible absurdity, this game has really solid world building so far, and I love this. Yeah, it's really nice, it's actually. It's so good, and also I'm just waiting for, like, tie-ins of things. But again, also, I like that the author really did pick something they could come to from their strength and go like, this doesn't all have to be super precise and exacting because of the things they put in place. Uh -huh, but and it just honestly, works so well. So they they done really well anyway. Okay, so I will say though, it actually, like to me, I feel like they actually have a really high level of skill mm. because there's a way, like, you don't just write people randomly forgetting things and just not understanding what's going on. Like, you do you really can. actually need to know how it works mm -hmm. because it needs to also weirdly make sense. Anyway, we think they're doing a great job. Yeah, this is fantastic. Anyway, right. uh, though part of me thought the devious giggling and secluded spot may have just been because I was about to be murdered, I quickly shook off those thoughts uh, intent on trying my best to have a nice time. I'm gonna die. Parsnip started to unpack his picnic camper. I have to admit I was slightly dreading what he might pull out. To my surprise, what he did get out looked really good. A tray of cupcakes, each decorated with different colored icing and sprinkles. A few even had chocolate chips and flakes in them. My kingdom for some savory food in this game. Oh. Everything is nothing but sugar. It and sugar. Is. And sugar. And I like sugar I wonder things. I like sweet things, but like, I get overwhelmed if I can't also have like Pizza, lasagna, mashed potatoes, I mean, meat, sandwich, something that's not covered in ice cream. We have had a mention of savory food, sugar. and uh, like, because we had the pizza mention, but and then we had never the vegetarian. eaten any of it. I know! That one. Trixie is just. Trixie's running just running like, off of sugar. Uh, yes, and, they and actually panic. mentioned that. They she, did. Yeah, she ran yeah, off she of has, sugar and panic. Yeah, she's really done it. Are things worth looking up? He got a pitcher of water out of the basket. Somehow it hadn't spilled inside despite being sideways and having a lid, possibly to find those physics. He poured the water into a pair of plastic cups and handed me a red one. I thanked him and took a sip. The water was surprisingly nice and very cold. I thought this might turn out to be nice after all. I thought I'd soon come to regret. At this point, Parsnip got a bag of sugar daddy icing out of his hamper and poured a good 100 grams into his cup. The sugar partially dissolved into the water, but most of it settled at the bottom of the cup. Oh, fr fear. I grimaced at the thought of drinking it. Would you like some sugar? <clears throat> I... No, that's okay, Pasta. Thanks for the offer. Then try some cake. I looked at the cupcakes. There were about ten on a shared plate, and they had different colored icing and decorations. Still hasn't changed. They, they looked pretty nice, if a little sickly. Stick. Oh, sickly. It does wow. say sickly. sickly. They might be melting in the heat. Oh, they might be. They could they be just melting be. in the heat a yes, little bit. Yes, yes. Because um, that, that happens even when you make really nice cupcakes, and we do know it's warm right now. Yes, I think the thing is you've gone, here's the cupcakes, I'm a little overwhelmed, and then you look back and you go, they're cupcakes with decoration, oh, they're they... They're kind of melting mm. a little, they're kind of getting a little, hmm. This is actually not okay. That said, something about them felt off. I never slay it. So food pretended I couldn't eat anything. I think at this point we're going to sort of pretend we can't eat anything. Like, we'll just go with the water and not death, you know? Yeah, because I mean, right now we have regular water. Mm -hmm. Right, and I was going to say, I if, if the food had been like um, something that didn't seem suspicious, I think Trixie would have totally gone for it because she has trouble organizing her own food and is, you know, tired well, and hungry. It's also one of those things of going, if you are able to actually notice mm -hmm. that it's off, kind of in that way, I think like there's there's more and more resistance. So we got, again, overwhelmed with person to begin with, and yep. now we're pulling back. So it's uh -huh. the, the overwhelm and then sort of going, mm, mm, I'm resisting. Oh, no, I just realized I have a disease. I can't eat food. Oh, no. What I'm sick. I just eat more sugar. It's a natural remedy. Sorry, but I have food disease. If I eat food, I'll die. I have two extremes. Well, it's just one of those things. Oh, no. Well, maybe you'll get better from dying and can try some. Parsnip was more dense than I realized. Well, keep that in mind, Parsnip. Maybe I'll have some in the future. You know, when it kills <gasps> me. Yeah, you can watch me eat. Oh, jeez, I thought. I watched Parsnip start to nibble tiny bites off the other cakes and then put them back on the shared plate. Mm -hmm. He didn't seem to have taken in anything I had said. He would cycle through the cakes, eating only little bits of each at a time. Occasionally, he would take a sip of sugar water by clumsily holding the plastic cup between his big paws, usually spilling some of the sticky water on himself. Oh, God. Sticky water on your clothes and on your fur. Uh, on he, a hot day. Uh, 
Uh, he didn't seem to mind. I watched Parsnip nibble on his food in silence until he finished, at which point he fell over backwards asleep. Dead. Oh, uh, good night, Parsnip. Mm-hmm. Something was bothering me about Parsnip. He felt fundamentally wrong. I looked down at Parsnip once more. The rabbit's strange mannerisms and aura filled me with discomfort. It's not changing. Mm-hmm. I remembered when I first met Parsnip. He had appeared from nowhere, as if summoned to me from the void. I had asked him about the king in yellow. There had been no denial, merely a gleeful cry of, Wow, I love yellow. Oh, wow, it's my favourite colour. I broke out into a sweat. A confession. I knew it. I'd been toyed, I'd been being toyed with all along. That cursed string Parsnip had given me all those days ago. I pulled it out of my bag and threaded it through itself in an intricate but all too familiar shape. Oh dear. The yellow sign. Mm-hmm. This was a gift to me from the king. Or perhaps a warning? Or, or a curse. curse? Wow. I shuddered in fear and quickly pushed the terrible sign back into my bag. I wouldn't have to think about this further. I would have to, actually. I bury the thoughts in my mind. Just later, okay? Just later. Uh, um. I stuck away, only to run straight into La Rose. Fog. Uh, 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 fog, how long have you been there? <sighs> we need to talk. It was an incredibly ominous conversation oh, starter. Oh, um, okay. Here? I peered down at the snoozing parsnip. Judging by his sniffing nose and munching noises, he was dreaming about food. <clears throat> My place. She started walking off. Sounded serious. I, say, I think I gave her a deeper, more serious voice. I'm I did. Get back Hello. To it. Yes. I mm, went to La Rose. The, the cottage could have waited a little longer. I stopped wasting my time. I again, think at this point we're just stunned and we follow her mindlessly going, ah! I think, again, like, uh, Trixie seems to be, like, even if we're sort of causing it, because it's one of those things that I'm not quite sure about, which is one of those fun things where you go, I feel sort of vindicated, but also, oh no, I created the character all along, you know, kind of thing. Mm. But so, I do feel like it does seem, like, again, I got blown from this thing, I thought I had control, now I'm thrown off, I had, oh god, this thing I'm trying to get away with, and you go, come with me! I also Okay! Know- yeah, I was gonna say, I also know, like, from my own experience with um, stress and staying focused, uh, because, you know, I don't have that long, you know, an attention span, like Trixie's mentioned a couple of times, mm-hmm. um, going, the, what I'm trying to do is get away from this picnic. So I stand up and turn around and, holy fuck, and my entire focus is thrown off, and then she's like, we need to talk. And you're like, huh? Come with me, and walks away. And you forgot completely what you're doing, so you just go away. Uh-huh. And, and the also thing is, feel is, bad because you just screamed fuck in her face. I was also like gonna say there is a thing I have a problem with where people go, you need to do this thing, and then they walk away, and you're like, but I, I can't, can't tell you it. no now because you've already gone to go do it. Yes, yeah. That so, one. so that's kind of where I think like you're just trapped. Mm-hmm. Went with La Rose. The I was cottage saying, could wait a little longer. That is actually a convention that I've seen people in power use for underlings as they walk away after giving a direction and without waiting for you to respond, and so you have to basically you're. It's assumed that you're going to do it. Uh-huh. And, and you, you either don't. have to chase them down and tell them you're not going to, or you just have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I silently followed La Rose to her cottage. Things felt really intense. Did she know what I knew about Parsnip? Hmm. So, Parsnip has given you one of those strings to them. How long has she been watching us? Wait, is that what this is about? Uh, kind of. There was a long silence while my brain tried to process things. It's just, you seemed pretty intense. I was kind of worried. I mean, well, it is important. A bit. The yarn. Do you have one as well? Uh, Trixie, Um, she just implied it. Uh, I have at least 20. When I woke up this morning, there were three poking through my litter box. I was like, friends, friends, pen, 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 pen. Uh huh. I was concerned for her. The the the, the receipt. I think it's the, the receive. There's supposed to be the receipt of cu- the cursed gifts from King in Yellow was bad enough, but twenty. I was like, or the reception be the receive maybe? because that's just how tricky. You know, Trixie can't find her words either. Oh, maybe. Okay, the, the receive. To, definitely. Like, I th- oh, to receive one. Oh, yes, but also remember, sometimes Trixie just doesn't speak clearly because she's in a hurry. It's true. It's true. So just the, the receive of the receive one of these things, you know, was but, bad enough. But but twenty, the rose seemed to live in blissful ignorance of their true evil. At least I decided it was kinder to let her stay that way. I'm considering using them to tie a makeshift noose. Uh-huh. Huh. Uh huh. Oh. Oh wait, was that a joke? Sure. So far, all, I, all I've been able to do is ho- hoover them up and burn the bags. Like my student Parsnip is uh, not receptive of my criticism. 
Or just of criticism in general. Oh, of criticism. So anyway, I wanted to ask for your help. I really need to get rid of Parson. So, uh, no, that was, so I was wondering, are you trying to get me to kill Parson? Yes. So I was wondering, oh shit. He's yes. weird, sure, but that's a little much, don't you think? What? No, don't be ridiculous, no. <sighs> I love how long her ears are. It makes oh, me really happy. Her ears are like, I, I have When I have drawn bunny people in my life, I really have just more ear. More ear. Eerier. More. Ear like, ear. Like, yes, ear ear. She's very eerie. Uh-huh. Hmm. I was just going to, like, ask if you'd, you know, throw him in a bush and tell him to leave me alone. Don't bully him to leave me alone. I stared at the rose, slightly dumbfounded. You think I'm strong oh, you enough? You want me to assault him? Do you also want me to... Pick him up with my noodle of... arms? With me and my weak, tiny little arms? Baby arms! What? I continue to stare at her dumbfounded. Not like badly. <laughs> Finally. Well, yeah. Basically, not like badly. But not, not a serious assault, just a minor assault. You've spoken to him, right? Just push him into a bush really carefully and be like, hey, leave the rose alone or the boys will get you, and that should be enough to spook him. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm. Fine. Look, living next door to Parsnet is slowly killing me. I used to drink 30, maybe 40 units of alcohol a day. Now I'm up to maybe 60. Look, will you just give it a go? I can't live like this much longer. I can't live if living is with parsnip. Oh. I can't live anymore. So this is an interesting uh, dilemma, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, Trixie is reluctant to do this. Uh huh. Uh, I don't think. I don't think Trixie will be agreeable, even though she's feeling pushed over. Yes. I think she'd just be like, because I can't. No. Because also, most of her reactions have been, uh, no. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. You know. And again, like, even really... though, yeah, but I'm drinking. Like, but that's committing assault. Like, okay. so Trixie still has an answer of saying no, basically mm -hmm. every time. So, still saying no outright, I don't think would be a bad. Also, this is again, you've problem. had your recovery, mm -hmm. and so you've kind of gone, okay, you overwhelmed me. We've walked up to this, and I keep doing this, and I'm going, no, more no. What? No, this that, actually no. mirrors my, uh, a lot of my own experiences just being thrown off guard and having social anxiety, I guess. Yeah. Um, or just being socially, like, unprepared. I don't know which one it is. Right. Um, and going, when somebody blindsides me with something I did not expect at all, I often go along with it because I'm just confused. I have no response. I'm not I'm not having a quick, snappy, clever response. I'm going, I what? And then I get to a point and I realize what's going on and what my opinions or thoughts of it are. And I go, uh, hang on. Hang on, whoa. Now that I've actually had enough time to process this. Because you've been bullied. Even though I'm over. involved. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think she could totally decline. Yeah, at this point, I believe she is done. I declined La Rosa. Sorry, La Rose, but I'm not going to push your neighbor into a bush. You'll get bored soon, I'm sure. Mm. Well, I'm disappointed. She sighed. Well, thanks anyway. I better get painting. I'll see you around. I felt a little bad about abandoning the rose to her fate, but pushing past it over what seemed a little too mean, even for my morally bankrupt self. And uh, even but push it is the king in yellow. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Or perhaps I feared him. I was still trying to process his connection to Carcosa. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, to be Something. fair, to the king in yellow. I decided I'd been fucking around for too long and reluctantly got on with my business. I love that line. It's so good. I stood in front of the abandoned cottage. The gateway to Carcosa, according to Nikita, at least. I didn't trust myself enough to truly doubt her, but I do still have that mild voice going, hmm, Bob, maybe. You could be wrong. I needed to make sure Nikita hadn't done anything here. This cottage might be the only place I could stop her. I mean, if you just line it with daffodils, she's fucked. Could she be. has actually... Remember she said she was allergic to no, daffodils? No, I know. But so, I don't know how extreme the allergy is. I was like, please bone her. It will be it will be a thing she won't like. Uh, the upstairs seemed pretty much as I'd left it. I knew I was going to have to go downstairs. Not a fun thought. My memories of my last visit still swam in my mind fuzz. It was time to accept my fate and return to the basement where this all started. The skulls sat in the same position as before. I almost started to believe I really had imagined them speaking to me. Uh -huh. But before I could step any further into the room, they snapped around to face me, and my heart sunk as I realized returning here was a mistake. Yep. Oh, and they're still crushed. Another, Another guess! guess. The, the little, little rat, rat returns. returns! Hello, Hello friend. friend! I was frozen. Whether by shock or by the ghost's design, I don't know. 
please, I just, I'm not here to bother you. I just, hi, your, your friend. friend. Yes. yes. The, the deer, deer was here, here searching, searching for a gate. A gate, gate she found. Already when present, the yellow sign. Creator, I am. Forever, never, never to be removed, removed. No, no matter, matter how, how much, much I tear at its paint. paint. The, the gate, gate is present, present. it needs only a key. key. No, no more preparations are needed, only, only the, the moonlight, moonlight of a full moon. moon. If what the deer says <coughs> is sneeze. Achoo, they sneeze. Fire flames up brightly and I cover my eyes. If what the deer it says, says is true. A believable claim, for I too require tonight's white light. Reunite broken body, no more. If, if the deer speaks true, then the endless ashen terrors only fall from the lake. The rapt, the pointed fingers of the king leading them. Warped. Warped, excuse me. The decay will spread. The rot. Then I was too late to prevent Nikita performing her ritual. It would be up to me in person. A battle I would probably lose. I spent a lot of time studying the moon. It was pretty important to a lot of myths, especially around here. I knew very well that the next full moon was tomorrow. It would be. Okay, well, that... Th that's all I need to know, so I'll just be... I'll, I'll just be out of here. Um, scalp? Bone? Uh, leave? Return. return! It, it is, is not, not important. important. This hovel is tainted. Unclean. I have no further use for it. I shall not be present for this evil. You would be wise to leave little the rat before the ritual is performed. Farewell, little one. The ghost was leaving? Why? N not that I cared as long as it was out of my life. Oh, oh God, the skulls shattered into dust. Any events of their existence turned to fine bone powder that joined the spores and dust in their toxic dance. I was thrown to the ground as the gold mist floated out of the basement like snow in a breeze. I climbed to my feet, my head's ringing. I must have hit it when I fell. Ow! Oh. I made my way outside and caught my breath. My phone buzzed. It was Greg. <clears throat> hey, Trixie, I'm going to do the thing tonight. Can you come down and help? Uh, can I wait? I have stuff on. Uh, nope. I need to get those parties, uh, Paste pastries made and running around all week. That means I'm already behind schedule. I'm doing it tonight. Uh, you don't have to come. I can do it alone. Probs won't work anyway, right? No, I'm coming. Away from me. I felt like I should go deal with Nikita, but I realised there wasn't anything I could do to prepare. I was exhausted and could barely think. All I could do was wait for tonight. The full moon. The fullest. I couldn't let Greg perform that ritual alone. Sure, it might be pointless, but if not... Just in case Gre it wasn't. Greg needed someone there who could deal with this kind of thing. Does that mean that actually I believe I can deal with it? Uh, at least... Oh, God. Try. But also, like, I I could... Oh, wait, maybe, at least could maybe try Maybe more to do than it. they could, or, or like... At least have a sense more than they can. I might be more organized than they are. Who knows? Um, I mean, I could try to deal mm -hmm, with it. Try. Oh, God. I. here we go. Oh, shit. I. Oh. I'm not late, am I? Ha! Jesse! You're not late. I waited for you. That was a relief. On the run here, I'd been fearing what I might find. Did you notice that actually Trixie didn't mention I'd been walking around all day? Mm-hmm. I think Trixie also, is actually feeling a little better. I was going to say, Trixie seems to be much more engaged right now with uh, her life and her experiences. Um, also... Even if it's anxiety-driven. Mm -hmm, it could be anxiety-driven, but also, like, there, there is a level of um, her... Uh, just even when you're scared or uncomfortable by something, if it's engagement, it stops the dissociation and stops you from thinking, going into thought spirals. Yeah, and it can still give you more energy. I say, um, yeah. I say, I noticed that she didn't dig in really hard with I was sunburned and I was overheated and I was torn down and I was exhausted in my noodly little arms. But also the run here, she just went and did it. Yeah, actually, Pretty I'm good. like, I I think actually in some ways Trixie kind of is lying about. She's an unreliable narrator. In well, that we way. know that. We know she's an unreliable narrator. Yeah. The, the game sets up that premise, period. Oh, yeah. Also, though, you could say some of it's an establishing shot and it's just assumed. Yeah. But she generally talks about um, how she's feeling in her condition. But also, it could be, um, you know, uh, not necessarily an unreliable narrator, but you're just so motivated, like you've never been before. I just dragged off after, you know, Nikita told me to go do this thing and I just really didn't want to, but here I'm in Capital Lane. And they go like, a person that I actually care about needs my help. Yeah. I will go take care of that. Okay, here we go. Fury, uh, that was a relief on the run here. I've been fearing what I might find. This was my last chance to stop Greg from doing anything my they might regret. Having meddled with dark forces, I knew it wasn't worth the risk. Greg, before you do anything, 
Are you sure this is a good idea? Just, like, think for a moment. If it is real, do you really want to make some kind of deal with an ancient, unknowable woodland god? I mean, uh, we've come this far, right? And if this is what it takes to save the bakery, yes, I'm doing it. Oh. Okay. I'm not much of a negotiator. Yeah. But look, I get everything ready while you are on your way. Oh, God. They pointed to a mixing bowl, b- bowl of cheese bake ingredients. Now, all we need to do is add hair. Why do you say hair when we've read it ourselves and it's blood? No, no, it says you need... Um, the other things were like, you need some hair, and then you need blood for the final thing. Oh, okay. It needs hair and blood and stuff. Because uh, Greg actually was like, you need this thing, and you need hair, and you need this thing, and you need, um... No, no, but remember, blood. we actually read the recipe on mm-hmm. our own, and there was no mention of hair. If there was, I don't remember. That's what I'm I saying. also don't I know don't... that she commuted the entire recipe to us, or just a skim of it. That's that's fair. Mm. I'm super self-conscious, so you should walk away. Ha, 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 ha. So, like, just turn around for a minute so I can uh, pull the hair out, okay? Craig, I know you're not putting your hair in it. Uh-huh. I told you. It is. You. It's, it's the not, blood. It is it's blood. the blood. I was like, no, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I read the book while you were out doing crimes the other night. I know the ritual needs blood. No hair. You don't have to hide stuff to make it seem less fucked up. I already know it's fucked up. Oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't want you to worry. Uh, okay, uh, uh, here goes. Yeah, thanks. Good job. Yeah, they Does picked it... up a knife from out amongst their utensils. Mm-hmm. Oh, Craig, let out a little whimper. I felt bad for them. A small drop of blood fell from their finger onto the bake. It seemed to sink into the cold pastry and disappear. Gross. Greg nervously placed, placed a tray into the oven. I saw the effigy was in, already inside. We were ready. So, if you're sure about this? I mean, it's our last chance to stop, uh, just in case it's, y- you know, real. I'm, I'm sure. I can't let the bakery shut down. Mm, I have to take the risk. Can you can go, Trixie, if you don't want to be here. Part of me wanted to. Most of me, in fact. But I had to stay. Whether it was to make sure Greg was safe or to satisfy some kind of terrible curiosity, I didn't know. I'm staying. Oh, we started this together and we'll finish it together. I'm pretty sure I just stole from, like, every movie ever, but it seemed fitting. Also, like, I kind of love that. Going, again, in games, all, usually all characters consummately tell the truth. Yeah. Because you're just trying to keep track of a new world and learn it. And, like, I I missed it because I was like, I kept waiting for the other ingredients that I couldn't keep track of. Right. But yeah, specifically the blood thing, and I just assumed the blood was after that. But you picked up on it really well, and I thought that was great. Yeah. Greg going, I'm trying not to traumatize or stress you out, so I'm going to lie about this for your for your safety. Yeah, I was like, mm, I think I think Greg is like, no, no. Everybody thinks I'm the cinnamon roll, but I literally think everybody else is the cinnamon roll. I'm trying to take of, care of everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm the caretaker here. Yep, I say, and that's good. Anyway, I thought that was really well. Done. Yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Trixie. I was briefly worried Craig was going to hug me, but fortunately the excitement of the ritual seemed to be keeping them distracted. With a trembling hand, Greg reached for the switch and flicked the oven on. I'd been expe- expecting a boosh of flame, the sound of chanting and the opening of a portal, but instead the food just seemed to bake normally. As normally as a bowl of cheese and blood sat next to a wooden skull, skull could bake anyway. <sighs> ah, that was anticlimactic. Uh, we need to let it bake, obviously. Jeez, uh, Trixie, did you anything about baking? <laughs> as we had already clarified a few days ago. No, no, I, I didn't. I am um, to, like, we just wait. I guess so. Oh, we can talk or something for a bit. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, right? We spoke for a while. It must have been a few hours, at least. Occasionally, Greg would check the oven. Smoke still billowed out of it. But fortunately, the bakery's extractor fans seemed to suck it all up. I don't remember anything we talked about. My mind was completely overcome with worry. I feared that at any second there would be a bang and some terrible being would explode from the oven with a screech and rend me and Greg to pieces with its claws. Hmm. It's been like three hours, Greg. Um, I think it's maybe time we admit that this isn't going to work. I put on my best disappointed face. Hmm. Oh. Before Greg could say anything, there was a loud bang. Oh dear. Eek! Ah! I had shot around the oven. Something was knocking on the door from within. Did you hear the 
Yeah. The little poink, 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 poink. Wow. Oh, that was, okay, that was slightly spooky. Oh, okay, little, but also like. glass, poink, 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 poink. Also, I have to say, it's inside the oven. I was not expecting that. I wasn't either. Oh, jeez, crack this. This isn't got me. One version is giant ass god just like crawls out of the oven, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and just more and more of it coming out of the oven. And uh -huh. just there. Uh, second option, it's a teeny tiny little god sitting in there. Beep. Hello. <laughs> Another bang. Oh, well, I mean, uh, we should probably let them out if, if there's anyone in there. Craig nervously pulled the oven's door handle. It swung open. A strange, cheesy membrane sack tumbled out of the oven and landed on the floor with a disgusting wet thud. It should have been revolting, but I couldn't help but feel hungry when I looked at it. Uh -huh, I just say it, it smelled, smelled good. It smelled delicious. delicious. I just say it smelled good. Oh, I mean, that... This isn't quite what I was hoping for. There was a hideous noise as the sack split like wet tissue. Mm -hmm. oh, a small God. pastry tore through the thin membrane, and from inside a delicious-looking, friendly pastry, Greg peered out at us with big, empty eyes. Uh, I looked uh, at Greg, expecting to see revulsion of fear, but their expression was one of delight. Hey, uh, okay, so my first thought is, if it can make you endless food, it, but the way you see food happening is with labor, it makes you something for labor. So there's a you that can bake even when you're not there. Right. The strange pastry golem blinked at us vacantly. They called it a golem, thank you. She called it a golem? Yes. Oh, my baby. Aren't you gorgeous? Uh, uh, let, let me help you up, sweet pea. Greg held out a hand, and the strange being daintily took it and shakily pulled itself to its feet. This wasn't what you wanted. The, the Greg, this isn't right. You wanted infinite pastries, right? Not a, a, a creature? Yeah, uh, no, uh, this is okay, this, this works. Uh, it's still pastry, right? Greg gently took the hand of the creature, lifting it as if to kiss it. Then, without warning, they took a bite out of it. Oh, God. I almost scream, screamed, half expecting the golem to yelp or attack, but it stood there motionless, cocking its head slightly and smiling at Greg with its strange smile. Oh, wow. You're a really tasty one, aren't you? I felt queasy. The golem certainly looked delicious, and yet something about it felt wrong. Very wrong. Greg lunged for the creature's belly, clearly in need of more of it. Greg, this doesn't make sense. You're, you're going to sell your clients this thing? Yep. Oh, uh, I, oh, no. No, I think I'll keep them. They can live with me. I don't want to get rid of them. I watched Greg gorge themselves on the flesh of the pastry golem. Cheese and sauce ran down Greg's body as they tore into the abomination. With every bite, the creature would heal. It was an endless supply of pastry. Mm -hmm. The ritual had worked. Sort of. With cheese and sauce, it sounds like, like a calzone pastry. It kind of does, yeah. Like this is just like stuffed pizza endlessly. Oh god. Mm. Trixie, seriously, you should come try this. Mm, Greg waved me over without even turning to face me. Something felt wrong. The more I stared at the golem, the more my mind rejected it. Its emotionless face vacantly stared at Greg as they stuffed handfuls of pastry into their mouth, lost in their gluttony. I had a chill run up my body. For the first time, I noticed a metallic smell. I became acutely aware that it had been present for some time. It's the blood. My mind blanked. I was stood alone in the dark forest clearing. Was this a dream? A vision? I still don't know. Is this a horror game? Oh god! I don't know if this is a horror game. It seems like a horror game. I know, but I'm I mean, saying. like, it's Eldritch, so yes. Okay. Like, it is listed as literally an Eldritch game, which typically means some kind horror. of supernatural or horror. I element. didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay, in I don't know. In the woods behind me, I could hear the rustling of leaves and an ominous rumbling, as though the very earth shivered in fear. I wanted to call out to Greg, but I felt as if I'd been punched in the stomach. I could only let out a pathetic whimper. A feeling of dread had grown into a fist-sized rock in my throat, and my mind was as stormy as the clouds of holly. Oh. Trembling, I turned my head to the side, desperate to keep what it was behind me in the corner of my eye. I saw it. A tall, thin shape stood what must have been twenty meters behind me at the edge of the clearing. A figure appeared that appeared armless, and at its highest point was a tangled mess of antlers. And worst of all, were its eyes. Two small pinpricks of amber light, enough to light its deer-like skull and wide, unblinking eye sockets. 
The eyes bored into me. The cell- smell of metal turned to the smell of death, and I was sure the terrible being knew I could see it. Oh, God. I let out a scream and looked away, straight back into the bakery where I locked eyes with a golem. It was no longer a creature of pastry. Its body was slick and red. It was a creature of meat. I could swear I saw the creature open, it mouth, saw its mouth open into a gummy grin. And yet Greg continued to engorge themselves, engorge, whoa, yeah. uh, pulling slithers of flesh from the body and forcing them into their mouth. Mm. Their usually bu- beautiful fur was stained with blood and bile. Oh, Tixie, for real, this is amazing. You should try some. Um, but we're gonna have to try, try it some in, in the, the next, next one. one. Oh. oh god, poor Greg. Oh no. Uh. Oh god. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. We're gonna have to deal with this mess in the next one. So if you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos if you're having a good time with us. Yep. Uh, please also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi and our Patreon. We have some links in the description down below. We would love to see you at one of those locations. Also, we have a Twitch if you'd like to hang out with us live. And I have been scanning. And I, I have been lies. And it was great playing with you.